Insight is a community service of the New York Institute of Technology. Covering the news of Nassau and Suffolk counties, Long Island News Tonight with Ken Eckhart, Carol Pack, and the award-winning Ally News Team. Good evening. I'm Ken Eckhart, and here's what's happening. What well, was a miserable day to be outside today with periods of torrential rain and strong winds. Cameraman John Bradley was out in the storm this morning getting us some shots of all the wind and rain. For several hours today, trucks were banned from crossing the Verrazano Narrows Bridge between Brooklyn and Staten Island. And this afternoon, the Statue of Liberty was shut down because of the weather. Some flights were delayed up to five hours at New York City airports because of the winds. The holiday lighting ceremony at the Big Duck in Flanders was canceled for tonight due to the weather and will not be rescheduled, but the lights will go on. And the wind snapped a huge lighted Christmas tree at the South Street Seaport in Manhattan. Severe thunderstorm warnings and flood advisories were issued in many parts of the metro area today, while strong winds brought down many wires. And mid-afternoon today, LIPO was reporting over 10,000 electric customers affected. The former leader of an MS-13 street gang in Suffolk County has been sentenced to 35 years in prison for the murder five years ago of a central isolate man he thought was a police informant. 29-year-old Wilver Lopez of Central Islip was sentenced in Suffolk County Court yesterday. He's been in jail since his arrest back in 2005. The body of 24-year-old Gennaro Venegas was found in Beth Page in 2004. Federal prosecutors reportedly had phone wiretaps of Lopez saying he put one in the victim's chest and three in his head. Others charged in that killing are awaiting sentencing. A Long Island packing company has been fined for violations after a worker was killed there this past June. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration today announced the fines against LNS packing in East Farmingdale. Back in June, 39 year old Yolanda Gonzalez of Lake Oconcoma was labeling cans of tomato sauce at the company when it's reported a pallet stocked with three units high with vodka sauce tipped on top of her. She was pronounced dead at the scene. The $5,000 in fines are reportedly for violations including broken backup lights on two forklifts and incorrectly stacked products. The dump truck driver charged with drag racing another car leading to a fatal accident reportedly had a nearly empty bottle of vodka in the truck with him. The accident happened Sunday afternoon on Jericho Turnpike in Syosset. Police say 32-year-old Everardo Nito of the Bronx crossed into oncoming traffic during the race, hitting another car, injuring the 84-year-old driver and killing her 86-year-old husband, who was a passenger. In court yesterday, prosecutors say a nearly empty bottle of vodka was found in the landscaping truck following the fatal crash. Police are reportedly still trying to find the other vehicle involved in that drag race. Well, sometimes when you're struggling with a problem in your life, hearing about the challenges faced by someone else often helps put your problem into better perspective. And that's what the Hempstead School District was counting on when it held a cultural program recently with some Ethiopian students who are now living in Israel. John Santa Maria reports. Here at Hempstead High School, students in grades 10 through 12 had a recent opportunity to meet students from Israel and learn about the challenges they face. The visiting students are Ethiopian Jews who were raised in Israel, and school administrators say it's important for Hempstead students to hear about other people's struggles. They can see that there are other kids in other parts of the world that have to go through similar challenges or more difficult challenges than them and still can overcome those challenges and, and make themselves productive and successful through education. I have council member district number one, which is the neediest group of people in all of the town of Hempstead. They really need jobs, they need housing, they need 
education. So having these groups here is really a big help to me and certainly for my community. I think this is a wonderful way for them just to hear another perspective of some of the challenges and obstacles that others have overcome that they too can overcome and achieve. The UJA Federation funded this program, Birth to Bagrat, for the past 10 years, and they say it provides support for Ethiopian children from birth through high school. One of the visiting Israeli students says if it wasn't for the program, he might not have been as successful as he is today. After a while, I could, I could saw that my grades are improved. they going up from 70% uh, to 80 or 90. Uh, I'm a, uh, they really helped me to achieve my goals to get them to the high school and graduated with, uh, uh, with a good matriculation. These Israeli students are setting an example to the young people back in Israel, and they're showing the students at Hempstead High School that they can achieve their goals. Reporting for All I News Tonight, I'm John Santa Maria. The Long Island Christmas tree will be towering over the ice skating rink at RxR Plaza again this year, just like it always does, but RxR officials say there won't be a big, splashy tree lighting ceremony this time. For years, many Long Islanders have marked the beginning of the holiday season by attending the ceremony at the Uniondale Complex. But the plaza's owners say they'd rather spend the money on charitable efforts like Toys for Tots rather than on an event. We asked Long Islanders what they think about the absence of a big tree lighting ceremony. Actually, I think it's a shame. Uh, tradition, you know, keeps communities together, and if something that's been going on for over 20 years, uh, basically not to go on due to budgetary cuts, you can find ways of making things happen. This is what brings communities together. This is what holidays are all about, family and uh, neighbors celebrating. Well, I think they should find an alternate way to fund it, because if it's something that's been going on for years, it probably means a lot to the community. I can understand there's a lot of money being spent on this tree lighting ceremony, and if they're using the funds to other charitable things that will benefit a lot more people, I don't disagree with it. I think that we all need to be prepared for change, and this is just one of the changes of life. I'm also kind of worried about the kids and what they like. Sometimes they come in and they they, they look up to that. They like they're going to be like wondering what happened to it this year. Well, Newsday reports the lights on the Norwegian spruce will be switched on sometime after dusk on Sunday and will remain lit through January 7th. Well, it was a great day on Wall Street today. The Dow finished up almost 250 points. NASDAQ was up 51 and a quarter points. And the S&P was up 25 and a half points. NYIT's LI News Tonight continues after this. and talk support group for women with breast cancer meets at Adelphi University School of Social Work in Garden City on the first Monday of each month from 2.30 to 4 p.m. For more information, call 516-877-4314. The American Parkinson's Disease Association has a monthly support group at New York Institute of Technology in Old Westbury on the second Friday of the month at 2 p.m. For more information, call 516-626-6114. The Nassau County Museum of Art presents Family Sunday at the museum in Roslyn Harbor on Sunday afternoons at 1 p.m. For more information, call 516-484-9337. And the North Shore LIJ Health System offers a weekly support Support group for stroke survivors and caregivers at Plainview Hospital on the fourth Thursday of the month from 2 till 3 p.m. For more information, call 516-719-2411. If you have an event you'd like included on the LI News Tonight community calendar, send it to LINewsTonight at nyit.edu. In Melville, J.B. Buno, LI News Tonight. In Beth Page, Stephen Katov. LI News Tonight. At Belmont Park, Sophia Allen, LI News Tonight. These are just a few of the people who have been reporting the news for LI News Tonight over the past year, and you could be one of them. Television news is an exciting and challenging career that could put you in the middle of what's happening and in touch with the people who are making the news. A career in television news journalism can offer you the opportunity to work as a reporter, camera person, or videotape editor or any number of behind-the-scenes jobs, including producing or manning the assignment desk. 
and it's a career that can be yours by joining the LI News Tonight news team. Produced at studios on the campus of the New York Institute of Technology, LI News Tonight offers television news internships that can earn you college credits and the possibility of being on the air in just a few weeks. LI News Tonight has been the jumping off point for many local and national news professionals, and you could be next. Call 516-686-7952 for more information on how to enroll for LI News Tonight, and let us put you on the air. Some stories around the world today. The World Meteorological Organization says the brutal heat waves that killed thousands of people in Europe in 2003 and choked Russia earlier this year will appear like an average summer in the future as the Earth continues to warm. The director of the World Climate Research Center says the trend of the last few decades indicates that extreme heat will become more frequent and intense in the future. He told reporters at the 193-nation UN Climate Conference in Cancun, Mexico, that the pattern of Atlantic storms also is changing. The number of mild Category 1 storms is declining, but the frequency of powerful Category 4 and 5 hurricanes is increasing. Pompeii officials say two more walls have given way inside the 2,000-year-old archaeological site, the second collapse in as many days. Officials say the walls collapsed this morning as a result of heavy rains over the past several days. The collapses involved the upper parts of a wall in an ancient house and a partition wall between two buildings. Both walls were ancient but featured no frescoes, according to officials. Yesterday, a stretch of garden wall ringing an ancient house gave way. And heavy snow and uh, sub-zero temperatures in Western Europe have closed at least four airports today, including Gatwick, which is one of Britain's busiest, Edinburgh Airport in Scotland, Lyon Brown Airport in southeastern France, and Geneva, Switzerland's second biggest airport, were all closed as staff struggled to clear the runways. The European Air Traffic Control Authority, Eurocontrol, also reported severe delays at, an, at airports in Berlin and northern Spain. Swiss weather experts forecast more snowfall as a low-pressure front centered over Western Europe moves slowly eastward. Mid-century architecture in this country is known for its clean simplicity and large expanses of glass that bring the outdoors inside. Well, now, some of those homes have been recreated as models and are on exhibit at New York Institute of Technology's School of Architecture in Old Westbury. Tanya Carvalho has the story. These may just be models, but they're based on historic houses in El Paso, Texas, designed by architects Robert Garland and David Hillis. Professor William Palmore remembers growing up in El Paso when these homes were built and pays tribute to them in this exhibition of mid-century homes at New York Institute of Technology in Old Westbury. It's a project he created with his students. And so we took the construction drawings. Uh, learned how the houses were designed and then produced presentation plans which are all over the walls. When we opened the show, it was the first time that the students had actually seen the final models because they delivered the models and the sites uh, like a model airplane kit and all of that summer I uh, glued the pieces together and painted the models. <laughs> most of it, most of it in my kitchen. Palmore and his students built most of these models like the Aronson House and Grossman House out of cardboard bases and acrylic. This wooden model is hand carved unlike most of the models in here, like the Budwig House. Made of acrylic, this material is a lot harder to cut through, so they had to use a computerized laser, which also allowed for a lot more detail, as you can see in this model here. And according to Palmore, the best design of them all is the Gonzalez House, built in 1955. It's a southwestern courtyard house, and so this large sprawling flat-roofed house wraps around this very beautiful courtyard. He says these models are the next best thing to seeing the houses in person. Because you can look in it and, you know, imagine the real building in a way that you can't with a drawing. You can see these models for yourself up until December 13th at NYIT. In Old Westbury, Tanya Carvalho, LI News Tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow. Have a good night.